Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies. Ladies and gents. This will be put up on both channels just to let you guys know. The Eon channel won't be doing any more videos on YouTube. Eon.tv it has taken us 90 days to migrate our website to a different service hosting provider because of all of the problems the system that be wants to cause people. So the Eon.TV channel should be up within the coming week. As I had told everyone, we were hoping by June 15th, that did not happen. Tried to push it out as far as I could. So I will hope by June 25th it will be up and running and you guys will notice that it will be a different kind of channel. Okay? We'll be giving you information on that channel that we're no longer going to be providing on YouTube. YouTube doesn't get the benefit of having run commercials and advertising and all of that. There won't be any advertising on the Eon channel. Unless it's referring you to one of the companies. There won't be any of that stuff. You won't have commercials during any videos. Videos will be up on that channel from now on for Eon. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's our intro. Now it's time to get into the meat of things. Won't be any antics. Won't be talking about no antidotes or stories or anything like that. Unless it's really, really appropriate. If there's ever been a video done by this man... Redress right, Eon, doesn't matter if there's ever been a video done by this man under whatever persona, they've not been more important than this one. By the time I get to the end of this video, and if you want to skip all the way to the end, then you'll get the final piece of the puzzle. You'll get something that not even the Supreme Court has documented. Now, what I'm going to do is I have to put us on pause for a second because the one thing I didn't do is I did not pull up the Supreme Court case which really act like it was a nail in the coffin against all of you. I'm going to show you how you can remove that nail permanently. Just, just give me a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, this site is just a site that I chose because it literally takes a quote from the Supreme Court. I want you to pay attention to what the Supreme Court says. They say that it's a rebuttable presumption that not all notes are securities. Pay attention. In general, under the Securities Act, promissory notes are defined as securities, but notes with a maturity of nine months or less are not securities. Then it tells you the sections where you can find that. If you do not know or cannot see or are listening to this and you want to know what case it is, it's Reeves, R-E-V-E-S, versus Ernst, E-R-N-S-T, and Young. Ernst and Young. Ernst and Young, I know you guys have heard of the company. It is a 1990 case. You just have to type in the Supreme Court says that promissory notes are not securities. They actually didn't say that. Wait, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Let me make sure you guys understand. Let me tell you what the Supreme Court said. They say it's a rebuttable presumption that a note with a maturity of over nine years, or excuse me, nine months, is a security unless it resembles a type of note that commonly is not considered a security. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here to tell you that the Supreme Court was 100% correct. They were playing on words, and we allowed it. What I'm about to show you, and I guarantee you no one will be able to debate it or change it, because I will prove it by the record. Your promissory note was never a security under the Securities Act, nor could it ever be, because it's not defined under the Securities Act. So when they said that it is not a note <laughs> under the Securities Act, they were 100% correct. It's not a security to be traded. We're going to talk about that. Now, I, I never looked at the case. I've known about the case since 1990. It was a big case. They talked about it all over the place. That's why you hear me say a mortgage is not a security. A note is not a security. You hear me say that because I was quoting this case. 
never read the case. I was just saying that was the Supreme Court precedent. They made that ruling. But it's not a ruling. They said it's a rebuttable presumption. We have to rebut the presumption is what they're saying. Why? Well, here's the thing. Here's what the Supreme Court is saying. The Securities Act says any note that has a maturity of less than nine months, pay attention, any note that has a maturity of less than nine months is not a security. So they're saying the, when Congress says that any note, bills of exchange, trade acceptances, bankers acceptance, and draft, blah, 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 they said by them saying that notes that have less than nine months is not a security, that any notes doesn't mean every note. That's what they're saying. They're saying that there are notes that are not securities because Congress says any note that doesn't have a nine month or more is not a security. So the Supreme Court said Congress says that some notes aren't securities even though they look like securities. So the Supreme Court says Congress just created a rebuttable presumption by not making it finite, by not giving you a more succinct definition. And Congress has never come to correct that problem. Go ahead, ask any lawyer, go talk to them and tell them what I just said and see if they can argue that point. I dare one of them to. Like I said, I've been doing this for 35 years. I've never read this case before, before three days ago. Never had any reason to read this case before. Let me tell you how important that case is. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here is the Trading with the Enemy Act of 1917. Trading with, wait, hold on. We need to make sure you understand that this is the Trading with the Enemy Act of 1917. Now we're gonna come back to page 418. Okay, we got this from the Congressional website. Let me prove it to you. See, statutes at large. Now notice these statutes at large is from April 1917 to March 1919. So this is some 2,000 pages, ladies and gentlemen. So you just go to page 418. Where's page 418? It's right here. Took the chance on and took the liberty of enlarging it for you. Let's read section E. The section is entitled You know what? I didn't get I did not get right here. No legal for acts hereby authorized. So no legal liability for acts hereby authorized. So it's no legal liability for acts hereby authorized is the place where you want to go. Section E, page 418. This is why police officers can kill you and nothing happens to them. Judges can rule and cause you all kind of pain and nothing happens to them. That's why arbitration is your best bet. That's why going after the tax credit is your best bet because they have done all of this to interfere with you getting redress. Let's go ahead and read this. No person, federal person, federal employee, federal agent shall be held liable, hold on, including banking institution persons. No person shall be held liable in any court for or in respects to anything done or omitted in pursuance of any order, rule, regulation, made by the president under the authority of this act, trading with the enemy act. Now I want you to pay attention to something because many of you are not paying attention. I'm about to read something. You'll notice that this was the old section, pay attention, 12 USC 95 or 50 USC 4305. I want you to pay attention to the wording because you're not gonna see that wording in the code. It's in the act. Any payment, conveyance, transfer, assignment, or delivery of money or property made to the alien property custodian hereunder shall be full acquittance and discharge for all purposes of obligations, other person making the same and to the extent of the same. Now hold on. I want you to see right after it says it says delivery of and it says money or property made to the alien custodian. So let's do ourselves a favor. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a trip. We're going to come all the way back up here to the top and we're going to go 50 USC 4305 2B. It's already selected. 
let's go ahead and pull this up and let's read it. Uh, what website are you? No, you're not a official site. We want to go to an official site. We don't want to go to somebody who's thinking that they're providing us some help. We can go to Fine Law. Fine Law is okay. I'm going to go to Fine Law. I don't want to go to these other sites because they tend to not give us the whole thing. So we're going to go to Fine Law and we're going to go to 4305 and we're going to go to number two. Any payment, conveyance, transfer, assignment, delivery of property or interest therein made. Hold on. Interest therein, delivery of property. Where's money? Where's alien custodian? Let's go. Where's money? Where's alien custodian? Hold on. Let me make sure you see it. It says right after assignment, it says or delivery of property. Hold on. So let's assignment or delivery of money or property made to the alien custodian. So when we tell you that you're not supposed to be going by the statute, the statute is not law. This is not written by Congress, people. You need to go back over the videos that I did where I specifically highlighted that statutes are not law. Here is your first example. The statutes at large is the law. But this mentions alien custodian. Uh, custodian. So you'll find out that the alien custodian office was terminated. <laughs> Do not stop there. Do your further research at the congressional notes. You'll see it was terminated and then transferred to the attorney general and then transferred to both the attorney general in some segments of responsibility and to the treasurer. But enough about that. We needed to show you this to let you know what was going on. So any of you who are relying on 4305, you must rely on the actual statute. Now, what gives you the right to act as alien custodian, property custodian? The fact that the president gave you the authority. You just have to go read the presidential proclamation 2039 and they've never taken that authority away. But we're not here to talk about that. No, 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 no. We're here to talk about what's the security. Now, remember, it all started from this act. I have to pause y'all for a second. Apologize, heard my dogs barking outside and so I decided to turn the monitor to the television screen in front of me so that I can see up close and personal what they're barking at. And it appears they were barking at the other dogs in the area that bark from a distance. Okay, it all started from this act, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, you see how I remembered where I left off at? I'll try to do that as best I can from now on. But everything started from the Trading with the Enemy Act. You're going to learn what the Trading with the Enemy Act was from the very beginning. I'm not going to convince you of it. I'm going to show you where it tells you what the purpose of this act was from the very beginning. And it had nothing to do with war. Let's continue, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to the congressional record because that's the one and only place we should have been starting from the very beginning. Now, the reason why we're going to go to the congressional record of March 9, 1933, because this is where we are. Now, what you need to do, because it's absolutely necessary, is you have to go to the official record. Why? Because the courts can only go by what Congress said. Now, remember... The Supreme Court of the United States has said that your notes are not securities, as defined by the Securities Act. I want you all to do me a favor and I want you to recognize one thing. This is not the Securities Act. Well, technically, it is. It's the original Securities Act. Say what? That's exactly correct, ladies and gentlemen. It's the original Securities Act. That's the first thing you must recognize. Now, the second thing we're going to recognize is this. Sorry, I'm looking at, uh, because I have cameras in the home. And so I was looking at one of the cameras in the home. And, yeah, there are some particles in the air that I can see clearly in the cameras. Because the resolution is that high. Give me a moment. I need to raise this a little bit so that I can point something out to you. I want you all to pay attention to 
This is page 78. We told you 78, 79, and 83. This is page 78. I want you to focus on 78, 79, at the very bottom. The last two paragraphs on the left-hand side, those are your best friends. Again, the last two paragraphs on the left-hand side, this is one of them. Let's get this out of the way because he ain't supposed to be here. Go someplace else. I, I guarantee you, if you don't learn something within the next few seconds, then you don't need to be watching any of my videos because I cannot help you. I guarantee you, if you don't learn something within the next few seconds, that Jehovah is not my God and he's not the one who pointed me to this and helped me to understand what the piece of the puzzle was and to be able to put these pieces together if you notice I'm going right to the sections I'm not reading 2,000 pages this book right here the original one was over 2,000 pages as well not going through thousands and thousands of pages and thousands and thousands of speeches right to the point so let's understand something here's where you're gonna learn something let's get him out of the way ladies and gentlemen upon the deposit with the Treasury of the United States, A, of any direct obligation of the United States, or B, of any notes, drafts, bills of exchange, or banker's acceptances, which includes promissory notes. Acquired under the provisions of this act, any Federal Reserve Bank making such deposit in the manner prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury shall be entitled to receive from the controller of the currency circulating notes in blank money, duly registered and countersigned. Let's take a look at something first before we go any further. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing is these items, these notes, can be deposited with the treasury the other securities cannot be say what yeah these notes can be deposited with the treasury and hold on the federal reserve and the membered banks of the federal reserve these notes can be deposited deposited with the treasury deposited you see it keeps saying deposit deposit so these are deposits you're gonna learn something I promise you let me show you what type of deposits they are go to the bottom of page 79 we have provided that any direct obligation of the United States any notes where did they provide that we just read it <laughs> this is page 79 they just said they just spoke about it now they're repeating it we Whenever you say something twice, it's for emphasis. Excuse me. Whenever you say something twice, it's for emphasis. Excuse me. Whenever you say... Okay, you got the message? We have provided that any direct obligation of the United States or any notes, drafts, bills of exchange, or bankers' acceptances acquired by the Federal Reserve Banks, acquired by the Federal Reserve Banks, not the Security Exchange Commission, may be deposited with the Treasury of the United States or with the Federal Reserve agent. Now, hold on. Let's do this again. Acquired by the Federal Reserve banks may be deposited with the Federal Reserve agents and upon these securities, yeah, they refer to these as being securities. Pay attention. So when the Supreme Court says it's a rebuttable presumption, this is your rebuttal to the presumption. This is Congress' actual intent that these notes, these bills, the ones that are capable of being deposited with the Treasury and the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve agents or membered banks are securities. Upon these securities, Federal Reserve bank notes may be issued. In case of the deposit of the obligation of the government, the issue of Federal Reserve Bank notes may be for the entire amount of such securities. Ladies and gentlemen, these are direct, pay attention, deposits 
Where's my deposit at? Where's that deposit word? Of securities. Did you did you see that? Direct deposit securities? Imagine that. Wait, hold on. You still don't get it yet, do you? Because you, you, you haven't seen it yet. Let me let me show it to you over here. Because like I said, there is emphasizing around here. Not just by me, by them. In the case of a deposit of notes, Federal Reserve Banks may issue Federal Reserve Bank notes to the amount of 90% of the value of such securities. So these are deposit note securities. Wait, let's say that backwards because I like saying it backwards. These are security deposits of notes. Wait, hold on. Security deposits. Wait, let me say that again. These notes are security deposits. These are not the same securities as those mentioned in the Securities Act or the Secure, excuse me, the Exchange Act or the Security Exchange Act see three different acts this was prior this predated this grandfather wait hold on told you you're gonna learn something you're gonna learn something let's make sure of what we're talking about to make sure we know what we're talking about ladies and gentlemen the first thing is the act of October 6 1917 hold on let's make sure of something not that one got to go here to Papa okay when we go to page 418 and we gotta, I gotta go all the way down here. It's not gonna be page 418 on here. It's gonna be page 418 under there. So we're gonna go page 450. Okay, that's what I was looking for. I was looking for it to go a little bit further. But we need to get the date. Where are you at? Give me a date. Give me a date! So I, I said I wasn't supposed to be doing that today. But, you know, old habits are hard to break. Being without you? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let's find out what date this page is because I don't see a date. So let's see if we can find a date. That is not a date. That's not a date. Come on now, give me a date. So we got February 3rd, 1917 right there. I mean, I know what date it is. Uh, the section, oh, you know what? This right here. The 1917 Act, this is the Trading with the Enemy Act, this section right here. And the unique thing about it is it doesn't give us a date on the outside, but we know it was October 6, 1917. It doesn't give us a date on the outside of this, but we do know it was October 6, 1917, because that was the date of the Act. And these are the provisions of that October 6, 1917 Act. Because I haven't gone over this document, I've only gone to that page. Because, see, the copy we have, we can do a word search. Okay? And that was the thing, doing a word search. Because we could, because the idea was finding that section that talked about acquittance. All right. So, the October 6, 1917 Act, we know that we're dealing with the Trading with the Enemy Act. There it is right there. Oh, you know what? Dag, nab it. I think it's page 412. This is the whole act. No, it's still page 418. Let me do that again. Did I go all the way down to the bottom? I wouldn't. I started from the bottom. Now I made it to the top. Give me one second. 426. Yeah, I think this is this will do. To prove to you guys that this is the Trading with the Enemy Act. That's 20. This is 19. And this is 18. There's E. No person shall be held liable. Okay, it's just the original one I did. So what you do is you go all the way up to the top. Trading with the Enemy Act 40 Stat 411. Trading with the Enemy Act October 6, 1917. And this was, you can find this version on Freedom School. Okay, they've given you some little cliff notes. But it says, an act to define, regulate, and punish trading with the enemy and uh, for other purposes. That's what we're concerned about, the other purposes. Everybody else is always concerned with the trading with the enemy portion, portion of this. Let's find out what the other purposes are. Would you guys like to find that out? And here is the end of this video.
You see, straight to the point, giving you guys the information you need. Let's prove to you that this is the final piece of the puzzle. Let's prove to you that this is a rebuttal to the Supreme Court claiming that Congress created a rebuttable presumption when they did not. They had already covered it in this act. Remember, this act covered the October 6, 1917 act. Because that's what the March 9, 1933 act was, was a, pay attention, an amendment to the October 6, 1917 act. Look at what was amended, ladies and gentlemen. Section 4, the sixth pa chapter, or excuse me, paragraph of Section 18. Section 401, sorry, I am tired. I've been up since 3.45 this morning, and it is now 9.16 p.m., and I have to get up at 4 o'clock tomorrow morning again. So I apologize. I really, really, really am tired. All right, Section 401. The sixth paragraph of Section 18 of the Federal Reserve Act. Excuse me, of what? Of the Federal Reserve Act. Wait, hold on. Securities Act. No, the Federal Reserve Act. No, the trading with the... No, the Federal Reserve Act. This is neither the Federal... I mean, the Trading with the Enemy Act or the Securities Act. This is the Federal Reserve Act. So when the Supreme Court made the comment, and you all saw the comment, the Supreme Court said their words not mine that it is a rebuttable presumption that the note is not a security under the securities act they were 100 percent correct because this has nothing to do with the securities act again likewise supreme court set a rebuttable presumption that a note that has a maturity of nine months is a security unless it resembles the type of note that is commonly not considered a security they were 100 percent correct they did not lie can't get mad at them for being technical so you get technical you tell the bank ladies and gentlemen because satcom has already put together a program we're going to be implementing that come july we mentioned that to you guys before we're going to be helping people with mortgages Right now, the AmeriLegion organization is now documenting this for people, whether you have a mortgage or not. This is what AmeriLegion is documenting. But we're doing it with the evidence that I have put together as a result of the help that I have received to put this together. So let me go ahead and give you the rebuttal to the presumption that these are not securities. Here is the fact that they are securities under the Federal Reserve Act and not any other act because those acts don't matter the only act that matters that congress was referring to the whole time remember it says direct obligation of the united states it says right here i want you to pay attention direct obligation of the united states and hold on got to go to page 83 next one next page pay attention under the new law the money is issued to the banks in return for government obligations these are direct obligations of the united states because it mentions the same group the only thing this thing does right here is add trade acceptances. They've added something else to the puzzle. What you don't understand, ladies and gentlemen, is that you have every right to bring forth the claim that you tendered payment. Why? Because you gave up gold. And the reason why it is a security deposit, because it is a government obligation, i.e. a government security. That is the type of security it is. It is not a security that can be traded on the market as if it's a stock. It's not a bond. It's not a stock. It's a security. Let's find that out, if you don't mind. Section 401, the sixth paragraph of Section 18 of the Federal Reserve Act is amended to read as follows. Upon the deposit with the Treasury, upon the deposit with the Treasury, treasurer of the United States a of any direct obligation of the United States any notes is a direct obligation of the United States everything your property your possessions all of your property hold on you guys are going to understand about property in a minute or B of any notes drafts bills of exchange bankers acceptances acquired under the provisions of this act well, 
Ladies and gentlemen, all conventional home loans are required under the provisions of this act. And that's all you got to do is highlight. That's how you rebut the presumption of the Federal Reserve. Sorry about that. That's how you rebut the presumption of the Supreme Court. It says any Federal Reserve Bank making such deposit. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when you tender your note to the bank at closing, you don't realize that you're tendering payment. It's not my fault that you didn't realize that. It's not my fault that you didn't realize the promissory note has value. It's called face value. Go ahead. If you go in here, you'll see that that's exactly what Congress intended for it to have face value. Pay attention. Let me show you. Deposit in the manner prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury shall be entitled. What's the manner prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury? 12 U.S.C. 411. Shall be entitled to receive from the control of the currency. See, they receive something when they deposit your note. They receive something when they deposit your note. They receive something of value. What do they receive? Circulating notes in blank? Circulating notes are money in the United States. Well, do they offset your account by what they receive? Of course they don't. And that's why it's incumbent upon you to challenge their stupidity. Uh-oh. I think some people's light bulbs are starting to blow and explode. So, what I advise you do, is I advise you to go back over this. Because this is the last part. Now, that was the last point I wanted to make. You need to understand it was a security deposit that you deposited with the so-called Federal Reserve agent. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the security for the loan. Doesn't matter if you put a house up as collateral. The security, the original security for the loan was the promissory note. The security deposit. Give me back my security deposit if you want to foreclose. You can have the house. I want my security deposit in its total value. In its original format. Go ahead. Give me back what was mine. Because you're saying that these things are worthless pieces of paper. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you to do something that nobody else is going to tell you to do. Contact the bank and ask them to send you a copy of your promissory note. They cannot refuse you of that. They cannot. That's the contract. They cannot refuse you a copy of your promissory note. When you contact them and ask them for a copy of the promissory note and they send it to you, contact them again and say, well, you had proof of payment all this time. I believe you committed fraud against me. And contact the CFPB, Consumer Finance Protection Bureau. Okay. After you contact the CFPB, contact the Federal Trade Commission and file complaints with each one of them that you gave the bank of security. They accepted your security. Your security deposit with the bank was witnessed by several, including a notary. And the bank has never accounted for that security. When you've asked them for an accounting, they've never included that original payment, that security deposit. And now they're refusing to return your security deposit, claiming you still owe them monies when the agreement was you would tender payment. And they said if you paid it all in full, they would accelerate everything. Well, you paid it all in full and you've paid interest. The notes should be paid off. Just need to pay attention to what I just said. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, this is what I want you all to pay attention to so that you get this. The money will be worth 100 cents on the dollar because it is backed by the credit of the nation. It will represent a mortgage on all the homes and other property of all the people in the nation. How many of you have children under the age of so-called 18? Really? Did you know that your children are wards of the state and wards of the court? You don't own your children. They're not your property anymore. They've been mortgaged. That's why they can come into your house and take what's yours. You really do need to understand the gravity of what Congress has been saying to you. Remember, as I told you, it originally started with the... Now, once you you guys need to pay attention. I, I can't string you along with this information. you got to understand it. It originally started with the Federal Reserve Act. The Trading with the Enemy Act is an amendment to the Federal Reserve Act. If you don't believe me, I think this... No, not this one. Where is it? This one? 
I think this is searchable, so let's do this. Let's do F E D E R A L S E R V E. I just put in Federal Reserve. Let's see if it finds it. Okay, as amended by the Federal Reserve Act. Interesting. I just put it in one time, people. I've not looked for that before. I want you to understand that the Trading with the Enemy Act was an amendment to the Federal Reserve Act. It's a continuation of the Federal Reserve Act, people. So, the rebuttable presumption, don't you don't have to bring this up to anybody. Uh oh, look at that, it's shut down. You don't have to bring this up to anybody. You don't have to bring up the thing about the Federal Reserve Act and the original Trading with the Enemy Act being an amendment to the Federal Reserve Act. No, all you have to do is say, according to the Federal Reserve Act, this is a security and it operated as a security deposit when I gave it to the bank. They received my security deposit, it had face value, and they've never applied it. Now the Supreme Court says that I have a right to use such as a rebuttable presumption, and I can provide the evidence, and you show them what I just showed you. You have my permission to even show them this video. I dare them to rebut it with, with all my heart. I dare them to rebut it, why? Because they rebut the original intent of Congress. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the courts cannot go beyond the intent of Congress. Okay? It really is that simple. They cannot go beyond the intent of Congress. Now, I need you all to understand something because you may not get it right away. The reason why they can't go beyond the intent of Congress because there is no statutory authority. But they did in that case. No, not so much in that case case. If you go all the way back to Mulberry, where the Supreme Court first ruled against Congress, that's the issue. That was the first going against the United States Congress, which they were prohibited from doing. You see, they said what Congress had the authority to do and didn't have the authority to do. But anyway, I hope those of you who have any sense and who have any bit of understanding, get this. We're putting together a program where we will help individuals who are getting ready to go through foreclosure or student loans or car loans. Now, I will tell you this, and I'm gonna be honest with you. Go and see if anybody else has been talking about this on this level. I, I dare you to find someone I know, I know, I know, somebody was talking about this years ago, but they never pointed out what I just pointed out. Go ahead. Go check and see. I've been watching videos a long time. Been checking, listening to people. Never seen anybody go from A to Z. Tell you the whole process. Wait a minute. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the War Powers Act. This is emergency power statutes. This talks about how that... Wait, hold on. Let's do it. Control F. E X T A. NT extent let's see if we can find oh come on now you you're not gonna do a word search in here all right all right all right um, let's see four seven zero see yeah it's not it, it won't let me do a search because this is not an edible document and I, I apologize for that here's your 470 statutes so when I put 470 that's how I knew that this thing didn't have it but if you go over this, it says Special Committee on the Termination of National Emergency was created to examine this. But if you've listened to the videos going over this document, you'll see that they say that these things, these acts by the president, that proclamation, oh, final thing, Lord have mercy. There is one more thing, I apologize, and I'm glad I brought this up at this point. We need to do one thing, T-E-R-M-I-N-A, because somebody got a nation, okay? Oh, I didn't do the control C, I apologize. Con uh, control F. Okay. All right, I put, let's make sure, gotta get rid of that B. I knew I had a B. I don't want determination, I want termination. And let's see. No, that's not it. And give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. I gotta. Oh, not termination, terminate. Sorry. My bad, my bad, my bad. 
Now, I want you to understand, because they'll say, well, that act and this and that act and this, and they'll, they'll keep, man, they'll be huffing and puffing because they won't be able to handle you coming in saying, uh-uh, y'all can't do this. I paid y'all already. They won't be able to handle these 80 million people who are about to lose their home coming in and saying, uh-uh, y'all can't do this. Pay attention. No such circulating notes shall be issued under this paragraph after the president has declared by proclamation that the emergency recognized by the president by proclamation of March 6, 1933, the proclamation of March 6, 1933. Where are you at, March 6, 1933? I know it's up here somewhere. Nope, I don't have it up here. It was in the other one. I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, the proclamation of March 6, 1933, that's presidential proclamation 2039 has terminated do you understand that so long as that act is still extant pay attention unless such circulating notes are secured by deposit security deposit of bonds of the united states bearing the circulation privilege ladies and gentlemen what you really need to understand here is that the act has not terminated it is still existing. Why? Because Congress made it part of the Trading with the Enemy Act, and the President has never terminated the act. That's the simplicity of it. That's where we are. So that's how we disprove anybody claiming that it has terminated. Ladies and gentlemen, with that I tell you, if you can find something better than this, to take care of the issues, knock yourselves out. But I guarantee you, the information I just gave you completes the puzzle in so many ways. And let's see if anybody can refute it. I dare you. By the way, one other thing. All of you who are looking and expecting things out of SATCOM, I am now relying on the other members of the organization because this has been exhaustive. I knew this was going to take a lot out of me getting to this point. I do not feel I need to research anything else regarding the March 9, 1933 Act of Bankruptcy or any type of security. As you've learned, these are security deposits under the Federal Reserve Act. They are securities to be deposited and not securities to be traded. Again, the Supreme Court said you had to rebut their presumption. We have allowed Congress to rebut their presumption because a presumption must be rebutted by a preponderance of evidence to the contrary. Well, the actual intent of Congress is that preponderance of evidence to the contrary. That's what I just did for you. With the aid and the help of the God that I serve, as I told you, I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses and I asked him to help me to help you. That's why I'm not keeping this information to myself. There are going to be people who are going to take this information who are going to want to make a profit off of it. Knock yourselves out. We got all of these people getting ready to lose their home. Gas prices are as high as they are. There, there is so much we need to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, but we'll do it on the Eon channel, not on YouTube. YouTube does not deserve Eon. And the people on YouTube, the, you know, the ones who are not my people, they don't deserve Eon either. So I will go and do things Frank Sinatra's way. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, 9... 9.34. I can barely see the screen. Like I said, I gotta go to sleep. I took a sleeping pill anyway to make sure I stay asleep because uh, it's, it's gonna be a long day. Take care of yourselves, everyone. I hope this information at least helps you to realize that you weren't wrong. You knew something was wrong when you signed those papers. You weren't, weren't wrong. And the Supreme Court says one final thing, that you have to prove that the parties were aware of these things. Both you and the bank knew that they were going to trade your property as a security because that's what you gave them permission to do with the closing papers. That's how you rebut that stupid presumption. But like I said, we're going to put the paperwork together for you. Okay, we're going to highlight that. But I've given you information where you can go help yourself. You don't need to come to us. But the people who do come to us they know that we're going to help them. Ladies and gentlemen, there have been some glitches in the websites. Um, some of them were not caused by the powers that be. Some of them were just error. But a lot of the problems that we've been having with emails, with uploading sites, with transferring sites, that's all been 
the so-called wannabe agency interfering with our rights. Okay? Need to let you know that. We have not been having all these problems just because the sun comes up in the morning. No, these problems have been intentional. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, may all of you continue to do well. The Eon channel should be up within the next 10 days. Uh, we've already, I've already paid. I, out of my own pocket, have already paid the individual to upload the site. It should be uploaded by tomorrow, and I will start putting content on it over the next week or so. Okay? I still am working on the stat packs because, ladies and gentlemen, we have created a transference document in accordance with the law. For those of you who don't understand what's going on with taxes, look up tax credit money and then look up credit money and then put the two together and you'll see that's what's been going on. I had a final piece that I needed to put together with that. I've created that and now we are starting to, and this is the truth, we're starting to take care of the documents and put the correct information that we needed to add into the documents and we're going to start mailing it out. My hope is we'll start mailing things out next week and you should start seeing things in the mail. I have a team that is working with me so all the weight's not on me and I'm not overwhelmed and bombarded because that's been the biggest problem is being overwhelmed. So we are working on that so that that's not going to be a problem. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, thank you for taking the time to listen to this almost hour-long video. I hope the information proves beneficial. Take care. Have a good day. Have a good night. Goodbye.